Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Just Law on Ikra TV. I'm your host, Ilyas Bulbulia. I'll be with you for the next hour. As our regular viewers are aware on Just Law, we normally discuss an area of law which is of interest to you, our viewers. Secondly, more, more importantly, Just Law is a live show. So whatever questions that you have on any aspect of English law, please feel free to call in uh, on the number that will appear at the bottom of your screen uh, and ask me those questions and hopefully I should be able to give you some guidance in uh, relation to that. Now on this show, as always, we should be uh, able to cover most aspects of English law. We get numerous calls on uh, immigration matters, which is fantastic. But even other areas of law, such as family law matters, criminal matters, etc. Whatever queries that you have which touch upon English law, please do feel free to pick up the phone and give us a ring. And uh, hopefully I will be able to give you some guidance in relation to those uh, matters. Just now, today uh, what I want to do is to look at... Um, Two things really, to look at uh, spouse applications and also in the context of Europeans who are living in the United Kingdom, um, how they can make spouse applications for their family members. So returning really to one of our core subject areas as this is the first show for after Ramadan. So we're returning to one of our key areas uh, which generate the vast majority of questions which is how somebody living in the UK, whether they are British or European passport holders, how can they successfully sponsor their husband or wife or partner to come and live with them in the United Kingdom? And the reality is, even in practice, the vast majority of queries that immigration lawyers receive relate to this area of uh, immigration law. So that's what I want to look at in detail uh, today. Just a couple of very small points before we get going. Obviously, on a live show, when you call in, uh, if your questions are quite detailed and I need a lot of information, uh, uh, what I'll ask you to do is leave your number with the control room and I will call you back and have a more thorough discussion with you later on. And again, a second minor point before we get going, if it transpires that I need to look at any documents that you've received, maybe you've been unfortunate enough to have a refusal or the Home Office is raising questions regarding your immigration application and you want somebody to look at the, look at the documents, give you a second view on those, then again, I'll ask you to leave your number with the control room and I'll try and call you back and arrange to see your document. So, in my experience, the vast majority of questions that are put to us live on air, I should be able to answer those to you, uh, answer those live on air. Now, if there are more detailed information, instructions that I need to take, documents I need to see, then again, I will make arrangements with you for me to be able to do that. Now, the number that you can call on will appear at the bottom of the screen. Now, the topic, as I mentioned earlier, one of our key topics, the uh, topic which generates the vast majority of questions, uh, which is really to do with those who live in the United Kingdom, whether they are British, whether they are European nationals, whether they've got indefinite leave to remain in the United Kingdom, how can they successfully sponsor their partner, the husband or wife, to come to the United Kingdom? Now, previously, uh, many years ago, the rules were quite flexible in terms of the earnings that you needed to have, in terms of the documentation that you needed to submit. Uh, however, in the last few years, uh, two things have happened uh, in relation to these type of applications. First of all, a very strict financial requirement has been introduced where the husband or wife in the UK has to earn a certain amount of money before they are able to sponsor their partner come to the United Kingdom. So what is this strict uh, requirement in uh, relation to finances with very few exceptions? That's the first thing that's happened uh, over the last few years. And secondly, uh, what's happened is that the rules are very specific in terms of what you need to submit to, uh, to support a spouse application. Uh, so, for example, previously there wouldn't have been any strict requirements relating to the number of wage slips, the type of wage slips that need to be submitted, etc. Now the rules are very specific. 
depending on the category of uh, uh, application that you're making for the husband or wife to come to the UK, there are specific rules for each category in terms of what documents uh, that need to be submitted. So you have to be very careful uh, nowadays uh, if you want to uh, sponsor your husband or wife to come to the United Kingdom. Let's look at the situation with British citizens first and then after that let's look at the situation where the sponsor in the UK is a European national. The vast difference between uh, the two. Now in terms of the sponsor in the United Kingdom who is a British citizen they want to sponsor their husband or wife to come to the United Kingdom. It normally helps if you look at what the partner who is abroad, whether they are in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, Iraq, wherever it is, what do they need to do before they will be granted a visa to join their partner in the United Kingdom? Because there are specific requirements, spe specific things that they need to do in their home country, uh, without which it is not going to be possible to make a successful spouse application. So what are these things that they need to do? I'll look at that in greater detail after I've taken our first call for the day. Uh, hello, Asalaamu Alaikum. Hello, Asalaamu Alaikum, sir. Ji Wa Alaikum, Asalaam Ji Bhai. Sir, we are British citizens and my wife. So, we have sponsored my brother in law from Pakistan. Okay. That application was refused. So, we went to the pre-action protocol. We went to the protocol. We went to the recently reply. And the Home Office admitted that there was a material error in your application. I understand. In the light, we are considering it again. My question is two. After this, how many chances are there that they are giving us a grant visit visa, a family visit visa? Yes. And how long will it take after this? Because it's almost one week of this letter we received. Yes. How much time will it take? Yes. That refusal, it has accepted that there is a material error. So what was the material error? What was the material error? Sir, it was this. कि जब हमने अप्लाई किया तो उनका जो रिफ्यूजल लेटर में रीजंस था वो ऑल टुगेदर बिल्कुल अपसाइड डाउन था लाइक हमने उसको जो बिजनेस बताया था उसके अगेंस्ट उन्होंने पेट्रोलियम पे कोई मेंशन कर दिया जिस सिटी का बैंक लगाया था वो बैंक का नेम ही उन्होंने डिफरेंट डाल के दे दिया हमने एमसीबी डाला था उन्होंने लाइट कर दिया वो जिस पर्पस के लिए आ रहा था वो भी उन्होंने रॉन्ग मेंशन किया कि क्रिकेट मैच के लिए जबकि हमने नहीं किया जितने डेज का था जब उनका स्टार्टिंग डे ऑफ विजिट था एवरीथिंग वाज ऑल टुगेदर रॉन्ग इन द रिफ्यूजल लेटर ओके ऑल राइट राइट सो इसमें क्या होता है कि जब प्रीएक्शन प्रोटोकॉल आप भेजते हैं और वो कहते हैं कि राइट वी विल लुक एट दिस अगेन सो नॉर्मली इसमें क्या होता है कि वो दो बड़ा केस को देखेंगे सो इसमें कोई गारंटी नहीं है कि वो वीजा विजिट वीजा ग्रांट करेंगे सो जस्ट बिकॉज उसने कहा कि हाँ देर हैज़ बीन अ मटीरियल एरर और हम ये दो बारह ये एप्लीकेशन को देखेंगे तो इट डजेंट मीन कि वो ग्रांट कर देंगे इट जस्ट मीन्स कि वो एप्लीकेशन को दो बारह देखेंगे इसमें उसके पास टू चॉइसेस होते हैं एक तो वो देख के ग्रांट कर दे एप्लीकेशन टू सेकेंड ऑप्शन दैट दे हैव इज़ टू लुक एट इट एंड से दीज आर द न्यू ग्राउंडस or the fresh grounds on which we are going to refuse the application. Very difficult to tell. Normally, in my experience, chances to say zyada hote hai. Jab usne accept kar liya ek bar ke wo mistake hai. To chances to say zyada hote hai. But even then, personally, wo case to dekha nahi hai. I would say at least there's a 50-50 chance that they will now grant it. Because usne pehle accept kar liya ke pehle error tha. But they don't have to grant it. This is the problem uh, with 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 uh, um, these kind of challenges. Second point you should note is that sometimes what they do is ke wo additional documents mangte hai. When you've gone through this process of pre-action protocol or usne accept kiya ke that we might have made a mistake, sometimes they ask for up-to-date documents before they make a decision. So that's something that you need to bear in mind. Thirdly, जो आपने बात की कि कितना time लगता है इसमें, normally judicial review में जाते हैं तब क्यों कहते हैं कि within three months वो के कुछ consider करेंगे। In my experience, जब उसने accept कर लिया कि we will reconsider this, in my experience, it takes about 
one and a half to two and a half months for them to look at it again. Because yahan se accept ho gaya, do bara usko kahenge, look at it, they might say, uh, okay, we'll need to ask for X, Y, and Z. Roughly one and a half months uh, to two months is probably a good indicator as to how long uh, uh, it will take. Um, now, ab ye kar sakte hai, agar kafi time nikal gaya, let's say two months ho gaye, usne kuch reconsider nahi kiya, to jo pre-action protocol ka jo jawab aya tha, where they said to you, ke haan, hum reconsider karenge, you can go back to, to them and say, look, you told us you will reconsider it and, and you haven't done, so what, what's going on? So you can, you can, you can, you can do that. Um, another option up ke paas ye hai, let's say about two months ho ge, two and a half months ho ge, usne consider nahi kiya, ta aap aap ke MP, MP ko ye letter bata sakte hai ke home office accepted ke yaha material error hai or uh, they are prepared and they are prepared to look at it again they haven't done it so you can ask your mp to push them so all in all a push kar sakte hai usko assume one and a half to two months for a decision uh, chances again i think difficult here to say anything more than uh, 50 50 but inshallah best of luck hopefully uh, you will get a positive uh, decision positive outcome uh, in relation to that uh, visitor application so that, that deals with that. Uh, uh, again, uh, before I return to the uh, topic for the day, uh, I if you do have any questions, whether they relate to this area or whether it's to do with anything else, uh, by all means, pick up the phone and give us a ring. So, spouse applications. how do you make a su successful spouse application? And what I was saying was that there are certain documents that the husband or wife who is abroad in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, wherever it is, the husband or wife who is abroad, they need to sort out certain documents. Now, what are those documents? In practice, there are only three things that you need from uh, the husband or wife who is abroad. And it just so happens today, somebody was raising the same uh, question with me, saying, oh, what does the uh, partner need to do? Three things that they need to do. Let me just outline what the three things are. Then let's look at it in slightly more detail. So what is it that they need to do? Well, one is they will need to submit a TB medical certificate, you know, confirmation that they are free, free, free from TB. Uh, so uh, uh, once a certificate is issued, they are able to travel to the UK. So one is they will need to get a TB medical certificate. Second is there is an English language requirement, so they will need to get an English certificate. Again, let me come back to that and look at that in greater detail. And the third thing, which obviously involves the UK partner, is that there will have to be a formal uh, official marriage certificate that will need to be submitted with the uh, application. So those are the three things that a husband or wife who is abroad uh, will need to get together. TB certificate, English certificate, and the uh, marriage certificate. Let's look at that in greater detail, because even something as simple as that can cause uh, problems for uh, applicants. Now, this TB medical certificate, a couple of key things that we need to remember. The first thing is that the certificate has to be obtained from an approved uh, uh, medical surgery in the applicant's home country. So it's not simply a letter from a doctor or a certificate from any local hospital which is accepted by the Home Office. There are certain places from where you can get an approved medical certificate and uh, an appointment has to be made to go to that particular place and obtain the relevant certificate. That's the first point about the TB certificate. The second point to bear in mind, and uh, this is more important, is that th there is a very short expiry date for these kind of certificates. They are only valid for a period of six months. So what I always suggest to clients is that with the TB medical certificate, it's best to obtain that when you're ready to make the uh, application. 
uh, problem sometimes is that if somebody gets married and very quickly they obtain the TB medical certificate and uh, the sponsor in the UK is not in a position to uh, make the spouse application, it could transpire that that TB certificate, the validity of that uh, 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 it gets to the expiry date and the certificate is no longer valid. So best to get that at the end. So it has to be from an approved clinic and uh, you just bear in mind that there is a six month validity date on that. So there's no point getting that very, very uh, early on. We should really get it towards the end. The other thing that I should mention, uh, 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 and, and this is something that has come about over the last few months, is that the Home Office has changed the way applications are made and also change the way supporting documents are submitted. Uh, you no longer submit hard copies of documents to the Home Office. What you do now is simply, uh, when you make the online application thereafter, you simply scan the documents and upload them. Now, the key advantage with that is it is no longer necessary to ask uh, the husband or wife who's uh, in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, wherever, to send uh, hard copies of these documents. It's sufficient if they can take a, a copy, a, a scan uh, of these documents and email the scanned copy to you. And that applies not only to the TB certificate, it applies to the English certificate and it will also apply to a marriage certificate. A clear scan copy doesn't even need to be in colour. A clear scan copy of those documents is sufficient. So we've looked at the, 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 one of the first requirements, which is the TB certificate. The second requirement, as far as the husband or wife who's abroad is concerned, what they need to do, second requirement is that they have to obtain an English certificate. And the level uh, at which the, uh, uh, the English test is set is actually quite a low level. Uh, the certificate that uh, is obtained is uh, referred to as A1 life skills and it's a, it's a test that you need to pass in order to obtain a certificate but the test is at the lowest possible uh, 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 level and the way the uh, system now works is uh, upon a husband or wife coming to the United Kingdom they passed an A1 test when they apply for an extension they move on to the A2 test and after five years, when they apply for indefinite leave to remain, they pass a B1 test. So there is a stepped process from going from a basic level, moving up to the next level up, and then by the time we get to indefinite leave, move to a, a higher level. So we'll look at that in greater detail after we've taken a short break. Should be back in the next few minutes. <laughs> 